I don't even know where to start at the moment. Every day there's a new headline. But you heard Sonia talk about the sort of the hype and the reality. Where are you on the hype reality spectrum right now for, in terms of what we're seeing in real world deployment of, of AI? Ed, first, thanks for having me on. Excited here to talk to you about AI. As you mentioned, we've been investing in AI at Greylock for over a decade. And we believe the shift that we're seeing now around generative AI is equal in importance to the earlier shifts from cloud to on-premise software and the shift from desktop to mobile. I think every company is going to be an AI company, and everything we do at work and how we live is going to be transformed by AI. So I net out thinking a lot of this is real. One mental model that my partner Reid Hoffman and I wrote about right. to think about how AI might impact our lives is this concept of a co-pilot for everybody. So GitHub Copilot is an initial Copilot product that's used by developers that helps developers write better code. Imagine a world where Copilots get built for lawyers, helping them write better briefs, for doctors, helping them do medical diagnoses, for salespeople, helping them sell software. I think if we're having this conversation three years from now, all of us will be using these products that feel like Copilots in the way we work and live. So, some context for the audience. So Reid Hoffman, your partner, he, he's kind of one of the founding members of OpenAI. He is on the board. He invested through his own means, his own charity or charitable funds. But, but I know you guys track what OpenAI is doing really closely. We'll get onto your portfolio companies. But for you right now, who or what is leading the way in artificial intelligence? I think you have to start with OpenAI and give them immense credit. What they've done with the transformer model architecture with products like DALI, GPT-3, ChatGPT, new models that we think will come out later this year, they're really at the front lines of bringing these technology to lots of application developers and users. And as you know, they expose these in APIs. And we're fortunate to be uh, involved with a number of companies that are leveraging those APIs on the text and the image side to build products that solve different business use cases and consumer use cases. You said that, to your mind, every company will be an AI company. Could you just explain a little bit more what you meant? I think if you look at the capabilities of these models on the generation side, whether they're generating text, image, video, code, on the classification and discriminative side, looking at a portfolio of loans and predicting what portfolio, which loan is going to default, you're going to see every business have to have an AI strategy. And we're seeing that already. You talked about Microsoft and the release of their new products around Bing. Google announced BARD and is fast to catch up. There are a number of early stage companies that are leveraging AI in different ways. If you don't have an AI strategy, you're going to miss a very important computing wave. This is February of 2023. November of 2022, ChatGPT kind of gets released to the world. Yet you, you, there are investors like you that have been at this for a while. I, my question is, how do you feel about that? You know, that, that, that now there's a broader interest. But I guess you've been trying to drum up interest in this well before November of 2022. Absolutely. As I said, we've been investing in AI for more than a decade. And we can talk about some of our companies sure. that are scaling today and having real impact. But I think ChatGPT was an important moment. I've heard it described as the iPhone moment for generative AI. And I think the power of that interface and the way that end users could actually use it in the real world, it felt like magic. And I think it showed everyone how AI can be used. But as you pointed out, Ed, we've been investing in AI for a long time. So for example, we're investors in a company called Cresta. Cresta is a generative AI company that services contact centers. So if you call Verizon today, Verizon contact center agents are using generative AI in the way they interact with you, leveraging the technology Cresta has built. And that's just one of many examples. So, so you brought up that, that particular name. Let's, we'll bring up on the screen uh, your portfolio companies. How do you value them accurately? You know, look at those names you're invested in. Um, you know, how do they make money? is on the top line one question, but actually what we're being asked more often is valuations, valuations, valuations. Absolutely, so it's hard to talk about valuations in a general sense, but what I would say is that Greylock, we're early stage investors, we invest in a small set of companies and we invest with a 10 year plus time horizon. Right. Depending on the business, there are different ways to think about valuation. Some of these businesses are enterprise companies. So Crest does a SaaS company. It leverages AI to build its SaaS product. Same with Abnormal Security, a cybersecurity company that leverages AI. These are durable business models that have stood the test of time and we think will lead to high growth, profitable, enduring businesses. I wanted to ask you about Snorkel because I know that you have published blog posts yourself, gone on podcasts to kind of use them as an example. As a case study, how do you discern these startups that are promising versus the start? You know, what I'm hearing from venture capitalists and your peers is, well, I'm getting 100 decks through my desk. 
about 1% of them are actually focused on AI, the rest just claim to be. So using that as a case study, explain to me how you've identified this as something with real promise. Absolutely. So when we make an investment, we look at two things. One is, what is the problem that the entrepreneur and team is trying to solve? And what type of market opportunity does it represent? And the second is, do they have a durable compounding technical advantage in solving that problem? Snorkel is a great example. So Snorkel is a data science and machine learning platform for the enterprise. It enables large banks and insurance companies and government agencies to take advantage of all of these advancements we're seeing in AI. When we first met the team, we were blown away by this team's background, having come out of Stanford, having published a number of interesting articles and results around ways AI can be used in enterprise contexts. And fast forward to today, they're serving many of the largest Fortune 500 accounts and enabling them to take something that feels like ChatGPT, but actually use it on top of their own data and in use cases that they can have in production today driving business value. I want to ask you a bit about the read through to enterprise and sort of broader software companies. There's this idea, right, that Microsoft may give Azure an advantage because those customers using Azure can get access to the OpenAI APIs. So that makes it more attractive. Do you think that makes sense as a business proposition for the bigger tech companies? I think all of the cloud players are going to need to have an AI story. I think the relationship that Microsoft has with OpenAI is a really interesting and smart one. We're going to see similar, similar products get released by Google, by AWS. That would be my prediction. And I think as you serve the next wave of applications that leverage AI as a cloud provider, you have to have AI capabilities built in. And you better believe that that's going to be a dimension on which customers are going to discern. We have to talk about ethics and we have to talk about concern. The biggest concern is accuracy when it comes to generative AI. Your take, please. I'm glad you brought this up. And this is why I'm so happy that we have things like ChatGPT being these products actually in the real world so that end users can interact with them and these problems can get surfaced. That wouldn't happen if these things were being built in the laboratory. I'm confident that these things in the real world with the right guardrail and the human feedback systems, we are going to see dramatic improvement and we're going to see models and pr products that are trustworthy, speak the truth and act with high integrity. The phrase AI arms race comes up every day now. Is that a fair way of describing what we're seeing in the market right now? I think it is. I, if you believe, as I do, that AI is a wave on the same level of impact as the shift to mobile or the shift to cloud, everything's up for grabs. We're seeing innovation and disruption everywhere. You talked earlier about search. Search right. is one of many markets where we're seeing a lot of disruption. We saw what Microsoft did with Bing, Google announcing BARD and catching up. Newer companies like Neva in our portfolio that are building AI-native approaches to search, we're going to see it disrupt every market. 